sorry. Sorry, Trace. I'm just getting ready here. Just setting things up. I did the thing. I did should have set things up earlier. But I did not. My um fucking tablet is bright as hell. Why? I don't know, I my eyeballs. Oh, that's the wrong profile. I'm doing good though. How are you doing? Man, I love watching the bars go. This is truly a genius addition from me. Love looking at those little bars fly. Boom. Boom. <laughs> boom, boom. So great. Good deal. Thank you. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing good too. Uh, let me just pop out my Twitch chat so I can lay down. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Already been three minutes? That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh nice. You've been enjoying Destiny? I miss it. I miss it. Not really. That's a lie. <laughs> I don't I don't miss it at all. Okay, I'm laying. Oof. I'm laying the fuck down. I wish I could turn my microphone more. Oh, I can. It was just being weird. Okay. Here we go. Hopefully I'm not too loud. I can't roll a tile. I mean, I have the bars to go off of, but that's about it. <sighs> Looks pretty okay to me. Just play on an Xbox. Yuck. I used to play it on my PS4. Then I got a PS5. Well, I stopped, I stopped playing way before that, actually. <clears throat> why is this screen so bright? This is fucked up. I don't know why it is so insanely bright. Like, how am I gonna... How am I supposed to be sleepy when I got this thing beaming into my eyes? There we go. That's what it is. Got rid of a really, really good gun. Oh no. That's not that's no good. Was it um did you sacrifice for more light? For a higher light level? Or whatever. <laughs> I think that's the power system in Destiny. For a light level. So, the uh, topic I've chosen ooh, for today is comedy, baby. What is comedy? What makes the comedy go round? What makes a ha ha? What makes a hee hee? What makes a ho ho? As in the laugh, not as in <laughs> the uh, insult. Um, what, what makes the funny go around? And the answer is really easy, actually. It's, I mean, it's fucking subject, subject, subjective. It's fucking subjective, you know. Um, comedy is like. Right? One man's knock knock is another man's. Uh, I don't know. A 
was gonna say penis, but that's not true. That doesn't even make any sense. That was stupid. Which is why I didn't say it. One man's knock knock is another man's who's there. <laughs> that's stupid too, but kind of funny. Okay, see? Like, it's subjective. I found that funny. It wasn't, but I found it funny in that moment. Um, uh, yeah, this is the appeal. I'm sick to pipe. Well, not sick to pipe, but I'm tired. And my, my brain is working on 2% power right now. Anyway, we're going to figure out what's funny and what's not funny today. I have gone in search of the world's funniest joke. And gonna decide which what it is you know is it a is it a knock knock is it a pun is it a, a he said she said they said we said joke who knows um and i got inspired to this because i was going across reddit as one does um and i saw this post of someone who i guess had purchased like a minecraft joke book and <laughs> you can't even really call it that because um the, the picture they took of some of the jokes is is really fucking great <clears throat> so i'm gonna i'm gonna read some of them off um and we're gonna um laugh at how these are not jokes at all so here we go there's like six or seven jokes on this page joke number one did you hear about the player who told the witch her, her house was destroyed? Did ya? Here's the punchline. In turn, she destroyed him. Haha. <laughs> Did you hear about the player who blew himself up with TNT? No, oh, I'm sure you can guess what happened. <laughs> Did you hear about the player who thought he could fly in survival mode? Oh, he couldn't! <laughs> Did you hear about the player who walked in on two creepers? He was destroyed! <laughs> Did you hear about the player who tried to farm in the nether? He was destroyed. <laughs> it's the same punchline for two <laughs> different jokes. Oh. Did you hear about the player who tried to put a saddle on a creeper? He went boom. <laughs> I'm not drunk. Uh, the sad thing is, I am completely sober right now. I've never been more sober in my <laughs> in my life. I've just this is so stupid and I, I kinda love it. Did you hear about the player who was pushed into a ravine when water fell on him and made a big splash? That's like the only kind of joke in there. Oh my god, and then I did more research on the Minecraft joke book. Apparently it's more than just a joke book. It has like Minecraft tips and stuff too. Um, did you hear about the noob? <laughs> the noob, N-O-O-B, who thought a bed of lava was a hot tub? It destroyed him. Very true, I'm sure you could. Did you hear about the noob who put on armor but forgot her sword? It ended poorly. <laughs> Dude, these are just statements. <laughs> they are not jokes. Did you hear about the noob who hugged a creeper? He went boom. Did you hear about the noob who punched a tree? Her fists are full of splinters. Did you hear about the noob who mistook lava for a pool of water? He sure learned his lesson. <laughs> oh my god. Did 
Did you hear about the noob who climbed a tree to escape aghast? Unfortunately, he didn't see the other mobs <laughs> hiding in the tree. Oh my god, guys, you can get the Minecraft joke book for 57% off now. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's the Minecraft joke book. I just had to talk about that for a little bit. Because holy crap. Literally terrible. Literally terrible. The worst thing I've ever seen in my life, I think. Oh, we're gonna move on. Oh, what is this? Oh my god, trying to laugh challenge joke book. 13 year old edition. Whoa, dude. I'm about to go back in time. Is there a PDF of this? Did you hear about the creeper that went to a party? I didn't. What did he do at the party? He part he party at the party? Had a blast. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's good. That's a joke. That's a that is a joke. It has a setup and a punchline. That is a joke. What the fuck? Okay, when I Google <laughs> when I Google funny joke book, this is this is a legitimate one that, that that comes up. A 13 year old boy has difficult. Is this just a. What is this? A 13 year old boy has difficulty with mathematics, failing in public school. His parents were not religious, but after a friend's suggestion, they felt the private Catholic school may be more effective. I don't know what. Is that a joke? I don't know what that is. I'm about, I'm about to go on Pinterest for jokes. Here we go. Wait, these are all... Wait, okay, it's hard to explain. So this is from Jokes of the Day. Pinterest page jokes of the day, but for whatever reason, they're all cut off. All the punchlines are cut off. <laughs> There's like hundreds of them, but they're all cut off at the at the punchline. Sister Mary Catherine lives in a nunnery, a block away from Jack's liquor store in Dublin. One day. She came into the store and said, Oh, Jack gave me, give me a pint of, oh, give me a pint, pint of bread, oh, the brandy. Sister Mary Catherine exclaimed Jack, I, and then it cuts off. The pastor entered his donkey in a race and it won. The pastor was so pleased with the donkey that he entered it in a race again and it won again. The pastor's paper read, pastor's out, ass, out front. What? A woman walks out of the shower, winks at her boyfriend, and says, Honey, uh, I shaved myself down there. <laughs> what? Do you know what that means? The boyfriend says, and then it trails off. Half jokes? Maybe, but they're not even... I, I do like half jokes. But there's no... I don't get it. Am I insane? A monkey is sitting in a tree smoking a joint when a lizard walks past. The lizard looks up and says, Hey, what are you doing? 
The monkey says smoke at a joint. <laughs> jokes without the punchline yeah but these aren't even that they're just like stories without the end a married man was having an affair with his secretary one day their passions overcame them in the office and they took off for her house exhausted from the afternoon's activities they fell asleep <laughs> I bought a microwave I love microwaves These are like, there's some questionable photos. I'm kind of glad this is a audio segment. Why shouldn't you give Elsa a balloon? Cause she'll just let it go. Ha ha ha. This is my step ladder. <laughs> Oh, now we're getting to like. Oh no, these are too visual. These are too visual. These are too visual. <laughs> oh boy. Can't paste. Oh, damn. Uh, and then you got like the dad jokes, right? Did you hear about the dull pencil? It was pointless. Why don't cats tell a lot of stories? They only have one tail. What? Oh, tail as in like, okay, gotcha. I got it. That took me a minute. That took me a minute. Why was Cinderella so bad at soccer? She kept running away from the ball. Oh. <laughs> Which bear is the most condescending? A pan, duh. Huh. <laughs> huh. Huh. Hold on, this looks like fun. Let me see if I can find a PDF of this. This joke book. I don't know if I can get the ebook of it, but I'm gonna try. Let's find out. I should have planned this out more in advance, but. Okay, we got the Trying to Laugh Challenge Joke Book 13 year old edition. I think. Nope, there's only one page. Never mind. <laughs> Unless I. Try this. I don't know if this will work. Oh, I'm good. I must be a registered youth. I'm not gonna fucking sign up for shit, bitch. Oh, we're gonna have to use the 10 year old edition, dude. Jimmy here at 199. Did he purposely stop at 199? Ooh, can I read a sample? Even if it's just a sample, that's fine. Oh, 
All right, guys, we got the rules of the game. Grab a friend or family member, a pen and pencil, and your comedic skills. Whoa. Take turns reading jokes to each other. Okay, we're just gonna fuck the rules. What? That's the... That's the sample? It's just the rules of the game? Join a rule of 20 people. Damn. That's crazy. Good for them. Wow, the preview is just the rules of the book. That's the line. I want to buy an ebook. There, I downloaded something from a trustworthy source. Kid friendly jokes for the classroom. Happy, smiling children make for eager, engaged learners. With the myriad of testing and assessments that take place through the school year, it is nice to have a moment each day to make kids smile. Whether you start the morning off with a joke or fit in between math and reading lessons, a kid-friendly joke, tongue twister, or riddle helps lighten the mood to get your students thinking outside the box. Whoa, guys. Jokes and riddles offer a great segue into multiple word meanings, homophones, language manipulation, alliteration, and more. Wow. Let's do it, guys. Should we do all 200? <laughs> no. We'll do one from each page. There's 16 pages. Why was the math book always worried? Because it had so many problems. Incredible. Why did the pony get detention? Because it was horsing around. <laughs> this is so stupid. This whole idea. This is the stupidest thing. But I have committed. What dies but never lives? A battery. What? That doesn't really make much sense. Why didn't Dracula have any friends? Because he was a pain in the neck. This is so stupid. This is so stupid. Why did the boy keep his trumpet in the freezer? Because he liked cool music. It's so fucking stupid. <sighs> knock knock. Who's there? Arthur. Arthur who? Arthur, any more chocolates left? That's terrible. This is the worst. What did the calculator say to the other calculator on Valentine's Day? Let me count the ways I love you. That's just like a lovely moment shared between two calculators. That's not, that's not, that's no laughing matter. Arthur. Dutch. Hey, Dutch. Let me get tuberculosis and die, Dutch. Hold on, Dutch. I gotta get tuberculosis. Hold on, Dutch. How did the hairdresser win the race? She knew a shortcut. Why are there elef Why are elephants such bad dancers? Because they have two left feet. What? Okay. I don't know make any sense either. Ooh, this one's actually kind of good. Knock knock. Who's there? Cash. Cash who? No thanks. I prefer peanuts. That one's actually kind of clever. Oh. What time is it when you have a toothache? 2.30. I do like 2.30, but I use that one a lot, actually. a bat's favorite pastime. Hanging out with his friends. <laughs> Why was the clown cat crying? Because he broke his funny bone. Oh my god. How do bears keep their den cool in the summer? 
They use bear conditioning. Like air conditioning. What gives you the power to walk through a wall? A door. <laughs> Saw that joke in a football book you had once? Nice. Well, that was 200 jokes for the classroom. I hope you enjoyed. I have that just downloaded on my phone now forever. So that's cool. I want to do the Try Not To Laugh Challenge joke book. Oh, Cause I want to, I want to try not to laugh. Ugh. No, I don't want to spend $14. Cookies, give me those cookies. I don't want to sign up for free. I don't. I don't want to sign up for free. I don't. Because it's not going to be for free. It's not. They're going to charge me. player didn't go on because he had a toothache. Uh, 2.30. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was never better. I used 2.30. Way too much. Way too much. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No. No. Never mind. Dude, why can't I find a fucking trying to have a choke? Okay, what if we go on, like, BuzzFeed? We're slowly making our way through higher levels of comedy. We have the Minecraft joke book. At the very, very bottom. Because then those aren't jokes. <laughs> right above that, we have books, clean jokes for classroom. And then right above... Clean jokes for the classroom is bu BuzzFeed. <laughs> okay. We do actually have... I was trying not to laugh. From, from BuzzFeed. Uh, from 2020. Um, it isn't centered around structured jokes but we can start with this and then find a structured joke one this is about the, the, the article is written by i'm calling this person out dave Stopera. and uh, dave claims i'm sorry but it's physically impossible to not laugh at any of these texts so play along at home don't do, i'm gonna describe them as best as i can you're not allowed to laugh at any of these <laughs> So we have the first set of texts. Um, it is a picture of two people um, holding holding toes. Like imagine you're interlocking fingers, but it's interlocking toes. And then we have per person one saying right under that, do you want to do this? And then the response is, I can't even verbally explain how much I want to do that. So that's the first picture. I'm trying not to laugh, but I only want to laugh because of how fucking stupid that was. That is the only reason I'm like cracking a little bit. Okay, next is a photo of text again. The contact name is Grandma A, which implies there might be a Grandma B or a Grandma C. That's my joke. That's not part of the thing, and I'm trying not to laugh at it. Um, and we are we are texting Grandma A. Heard you got an iPhone. How do you like it? And then Grandma A responds, Massachusetts. Because it's Grandma. Grandma doesn't know the text. That's the joke, guys. Number three is I think the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. It is a picture of a jar of applesauce. 
and then right under it says sorry wrong person and then the response is what kind of conversations are you having that's just not funny at all okay this is a, a full conversation i'm gonna do two different voices here we go where are you i left early sorry i couldn't stay longer what the fuck where are you going i'm going home are you kidding me come back you're drunk don't worry i called an uber we drank at your place oh where am i going see it's like not funny grandma a was the funniest part of this i shouldn't think about grandma a because it's making me laugh and then we have another conversation is your refrigerator running who the fuck is this is your refrigerator running ma'am this is a refrigerator insurance company yes haha <laughs> you better go catch it what catch what the refrigerator you asked me if it was running and it is then you better go catch it Fucking stupid literally stupid another conversation this is between a mother and a child what's my mom voice best mom voice please stop changing the Google logo so much I like the original one mom I don't change the logo Google changes it on my computer you don't run the Google if I did I wouldn't be running driving a 2004 Ford these are the worst These are actually terrible. I have to stop. I have to. It's... They're all like, very like, yeah, they're terrible. It's very like millennial humor. Okay, this one is purely picture based. So I'm gonna try and describe Uh, the very visual gag. You can we can laugh now because this is in a. Oh wait no, no sorry. This is also by Dave Dave Stopera at it again with another banger. Uh, and physically impossible not to laugh at these pictures. So we can't laugh. Well, my bad. My bad. I have to Grandma A. Grandma A really fucking almost got me. Just the implication of Grandma B and Grandma C is just like really funny to me. Anyway. <laughs> crazy camera roll yeah oh I haven't checked my camera roll in like forever it's probably all just pictures of dog food honestly <laughs> anyway so we got picture number one it is a person holding up a jar of uh, chili flakes and it's called uh, crutch papers so I guess that's kind of funny right Um, the second picture is a sign next to a vat of uh, cream cheese, but the sign says Cheem Creams, which is actually, it's a little funny. Uh, the next photo is of uh, a bottle of ketchup that has been mislabeled ketchup, like with an A instead of a U. So we're getting worse. They seem to be all just like typo based by the by the looks of it. Uh, this next one's of a fire extinguisher, where extinguisher is spelled E X T X T I N G U I X E H R, which is kind of crazy. Um, we have a smoke alarm that is labeled smork a lamb spinch i mean spinch is just i'm just gonna read them out ranny bow sprimkle ketchup a banch perfect chicken and nut guts that's actually kind of funny chicken nut guts i like that oat meat okay these are kind of getting funny nugmet instead of nutmeg 
Uh, a soap dispenser labeled hand soup. What? It Biscuits, gravy, scrambled eggs, and jelly ass? What? No smorking. Sabart bucks? Sabartics? That's pretty funny. Yeah, these are all just 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 physical typos. Oh my god, how many articles did Dave stop Barra? A peps poom? That one's just photoshopped. Dave. That is this is a photo of a restroom sign that says pest poom, but it is clearly the most photoshopped thing I've ever seen in my life. Dave. David. Dave. Dave. Oh my god, Dave. What is this? No, not on Pinterest. You already tried Pinterest. How many of these? Donate Bloob. Dave needs to be stopped. Let's, you know what? I'm interested in what Dave has written now. What is his most recent post? The same shit. Dave. This was like three days ago. And he's still doing it. Dave, you're not. I hate to break it to you, man. Typos aren't that funny, <laughs> Dave. I'm sorry, man. Okay, what's the craziest article he's ever written? Just fucking stupid BuzzFeed shit. Honestly, there's nothing that crazy. Okay, so we have the the pyramid of of funny. Uh, Minecraft joke book, jokes for clean jokes for kids in the classroom, and then BuzzFeed articles. Uh, what would be one level above BuzzFeed articles? What about like? Can we find like an edgy joke book? Is there an edgy joke book? Because I feel like edgy jokes are funny when you're like young and then you grow up and you're like, eh, you know? Okay, these are not edgy. My boss told me to have a good day, so I went home. What? It's not edgy at all. Give a man a match and he'll be warm for a few hours. Set a man on fire and he will be warm for the rest of his life. That's a bit better. Oh my god, I laid someone on fire. What is the worst combination of illness? Alzheimer's and diarrhea. You're running, but can't remember what. <laughs> oh no. Okay, yeah, that. That's an edgy joke. That's some dark humor. We like that. But that's, yeah, that's not an edgy joke. That's dark humor. Dark humor is, I would say, higher on the pyramid. Knock, knock, who's there? Not your dad. <laughs> so yeah, these are dark jokes. That's not edgy humor. That's that, Those are different. Um, corny 
jokes. Here we go. Um, someone wrote a fucking essay on jokes. Whoa. I have to pre-read these. <laughs> okay, what is this? Okay. This is actually kind of interesting. There's like a philosophical review from the University of Florida that some guy wrote. This is what a university professor wrote as, as an example of an offensive joke. Two men are knocking back beers in a bar on the 90th floor of the Empire State Building. You know, there's a slipstream around the 70th floor, says one, opening a window. And if you jump out here, it'll suck you back in at the 50th floor. Ah, come on, says the second, more than a little drunk. No, really, says the first, I'll show you. So he jumps out the window, comes in through the 50th floor window, takes the elevator up, and appears triumphantly back in the bar. Hey, I'm gonna try that, says the second guy. He jumps out the window, falls 90 floors, and is instantly killed. Hey, says the bartender, looking hard at the first man. You can be a real bastard when you're drunk, Superman. You've got to admit that this is a funny joke. <laughs> it's got an interesting premise, it's logical, it moves well, and it has an unusual and surprising punchline. So who can be offended? Superman is not a person. Superman is a fictitious comic book character. True enough. You did, yeah. Even such a seemingly innocuous joke can prove to be offensive to alcoholics. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh, okay. Uh, we're getting, we're getting. One of these is um, yeah, that's that's oof, that's not good. That's yeah. We're not gonna say that one. Okay, I have to pre-read this one. Ooh, the New Yorker calls not just the dirtiest joke in the, but the filthiest joke in the world. This is apparently the filthiest joke in the world. Oh, and it's a Mad Lib. Oh shit, it's a Mad Lib, okay. Oh fuck, I gotta write things down. Well, I gotta pre-read to make sure it's not, like, mean. Oh, nope. Um. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. That's... Oh my god. Not gonna do that. Not gonna do that. Not gonna say that one. Never mind. No, no, not doing that. Mad lips. That mad lips. Is good. Uh uh. P U stinky stinky. Oh my god. <laughs> it's uh, you don't want to know. It's a it's a mad libs. Um, it's, it's, I mean, if you're no, you don't want to know. Just trust me when I say you do not want to know. You, it's uh, uh, -uh. uh I'm trying to find one that I can save from this. <laughs> what? Oh. 
Okay, this one is is prefaced as a, a dirty joke. It is. Um. Oh, this okay. This is actually kind of interesting. By the way of a side, having defended the richness, if not the purity, of dirty jokes and the use of bad language, I'd like to offer my two favorite sex jokes. You will notice that nary a naughty word is to be found in either one of these jokes. There's absolutely no use of Carlin's forbidden sexual seven terms, or even any explicit description of sex. Nonetheless, the setups and the punchlines of the jokes listed below are undeniably sexual, naughty, and funny. So two examples. Yeah. Okay. This one's a... It's a it's, this one's a read. It's called bear hunting. So here we go. Bob was excited about his new 338 rifle and decided to try bear hunting. He traveled up to Alaska, spotted a small brown bear, and shot it. Soon after, there was a tap on his shoulder, and he turned around to see a big black bear. The black bear said, That was a very bad mistake. That bear is my cousin. I'm going to give you two choices. Either I maul you to death, or we have sex. After considering briefly... <laughs> Bob decided to accept the latter alternative, so the black bear had its way with Bob. Okay, Jesus. Even though he felt... Okay. Bob soon recovered and vowed revenge. He headed on another trip to Alaska, where he found the black bear and shot it dead. Right after, there was another tap on his shoulder. This time, a huge grizzly bear stood right next to him. The grizzly said, that was a big mistake, Bob. <laughs> he knows his name. That bear was my cousin. You've got two choices. Either I'm all your death or we have... Why does... Why does you have to put the word rough in there? Again, Bob thought it was better to cooperate with the grizzly bear than be mauled to death. Although he survived, it took Bob several months before he reco fully recovered. <laughs> now Bob was completely outraged. He headed back to Alaska and managed to track down the grizzly bear and shot it. He felt sweet revenge, but then moments later... There was a tap on his shoulder. He turned around to find a giant polar bear standing there. The polar bear looked at him and said, Admit it, Bobby, don't come here just for hunting, do you? Jesus Christ. Who wrote that? I just want to talk. Oh, God. Ethnic humor. Oh, God. I don't think I can read any of those. <laughs> Okay, this one's this one's kind of funny. My apologies to Italians. It's, it's a little funny. What do you call it when an Italian has one arm shorter than the other? A speech impediment. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay, this, this one's kind of good too. Well, it goes clop clop clop, bang bang bang, clop clop clop, <laughs> an Amish drive by shooting. Oh, it's a little funny. And what are the Amish gonna do? It's not like they're watching this. Hey. Ugh. Oh my god. This is a really interesting article. I mean, they don't use the internet. They're not watching. They ain't gonna get their feelings hurt. Logically speaking, jokes now break down stereotypes. Oh my god. This is crazy. It's a, I might actually have to favor that article and come back. Okay, so I guess right above BuzzFeed, we have jokes made by a Florida University professor. <laughs> I 
And sure, yeah, right about that, we can do dark jokes. Let's do some dark jokes. The inner amalgamations of my mind are frightening, and you would hate them. I tell dark. You know, I'm not like other boys. I tell dark jokes. I only. My humor's so fucked up. What's worse than a lobster on your piano? Crabs on your organ. I get it, cause it's like the STI. <laughs> I was at the bank going to withdraw money from my account when the clerk told me I had an outstanding balance and I told her, thank you, I did gymnastics as a kid. That one's a little less than the first one, but that's fine. What do you call headphones that walk out on children? Deadbeats. <laughs> oh, that one's um, that one's really sad. I'm not saying that one. <laughs> Why do some kids only experience 364 days per year? Because they don't have a Father's Day. Oh. Why? These are all dad related. I don't want all dad ones. Give a man a plane ticket and he flies for the day. Push him out of the plane at 3,000 feet and he'll fly for the rest of his life. <laughs> I was in Russia listening to a stand-up comedian make fun of Putin. The jokes weren't that good, but I liked the execution. Uh, that one's really good, actually. First rule of vegan club. You tell everyone about vegan club. The doctor walks into a room with a dying patient and tells him, I'm sorry, but you only have ten left. The patient asks him, ten what, doc? Hours, days, weeks? The doctor calmly looks at him and says, Nine? Where did Josh go after getting lost on a minefield? Everywhere. Josh went everywhere. <laughs> what did Kermit the Frog say at Jim Henson's funeral? Nothing. Jeez. Oh, this one's fucked. Why can't orphans play baseball? Because they don't know where home is. <laughs> oh. oh my god. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, or at least it does if you throw it hard enough. a joke about trickle-down economics, but 99% one of but 99% of you will never get it. Well, what do you call a dog with no legs? Doesn't matter what you call him, he won't come anyway. Oh. <laughs> Poor dog. I recently saw an advertisement for a double entendre contest, so I entered my friend. Oh, that one's, that's a good one. Two hunters are in the woods when one of them collapses. His hunting buddy immediately calls 911. My friend isn't breathing, he shouts into the phone. What should I do? Relax, the operator tells him. I can help. First, let's make sure he's dead. There's silence and then a gunshot. The guy gets back on the phone and says, okay, now what? That one's kind of lame. What is the longest joke ever written? I want to read that. Longest joke ever written. The longest joke in the world. Dot com. Whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. This is going to be kind of cool. Apparently, if you were to print this joke out on a piece of paper, it would be 42 minutes, 42 meters long, top to bottom. That's insane. That's like a six story building. I'm going to read it. The longest joke in the world. It's called Lost in the Desert. Okay, here we go. Strap yourself in, get comfy. <laughs> so there's a man crawling through the desert. He's decided to try his SUV in a little bit of cross-country travel. Had great fun zooming over the badlands and through the sand. 
got lost, hit a big rock, and then he couldn't get it started again. There was no cell phone towers anywhere near, so his cell phone was useless. He had no family. His parents had died a few years before an auto accident. Oh, in an auto accident. And his few friends had no idea he was out here. He stayed with the car for a day or so, but his bottle of water ran out. And he was getting thirsty. He thought maybe he knew the direction back now that he'd paid attention to the sun and thought he'd figured out which way was north, so he decided to start walking. He figured he only had to go about 30 miles or so and he'd be back in the small town gun gas in last. He thinks about walking at night to avoid the heat and sun, but based upon how dark it actually was the night before, and given that he has no flashlight, he's afraid he'll break a leg or step on a rattlesnake. So he puts on some sunblock, puts the rest in his pocket for a re reapplication later, brings an umbrella he had in the back of the SUV with him to give him a little shade, pours the windshield wiper fluid into his water bottle in case he gets desperate. What? That's stupid. Brings his pocket knife in case he finds a cactus that looks like it might have water in it and heads out in the direction he thinks is right. Oh. He walks for the entire day. By the end of the day, he's really thirsty. He's been sweating all day and his lips are starting to crack. He's reapplied the sunblock twice and tried to stay under the umbrella, but he still feels sunburned. The windshield wiper fluid and sloshing in the bottle in his pocket is really getting tempting now. He knows that it's mainly water and some ethanol and coloring, but he also knows that they add some kind of poison to it to keep people from drinking it. He wonders what the poison is and whether the poison would, could be worse than dying of thirst. He pushes on, trying to get that small town, trying to get to that small town before dark. By the end of the day, he starts getting worried. He figures he's been walking at least three miles for an hour, according to his watch. Oh, for over 10 hours. That means if his estimate was right, he should be close to the town, but he doesn't recognize any of this. He had to cross a dry creek bed a mile or two back. He doesn't remember coming through it on the SUV. He figures that maybe he got he got his direction off just to buy a little, and the dry creek bed was just off the side of his path. He tells himself that he's close, and that after dark he'll start seeing town lights over one of these hills, and that'll be all he needs. As it gets dim enough, as it gets dim enough that he starts stumbling over small rocks and things, he finds a spot and sits down to wait for full dark and town lights. Full dark comes before he knows it. He must have dozed off. He stands back up and turns all the way around. He sees nothing but stars. He wakes up the next morning feeling absolutely lousy. His eyes are gummy and his mouth and nose feel like they're full of sand. He is so thirsty he can't even swallow. He barely got any sleep because he was so cold. He's forgotten how cold it got at night in the desert and hadn't noticed in the night before because he'd been in his car. He knows the rules of threes. Three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food, then you die. Some people can make it a little longer, but in the best situations. But the desert heat and having to walk and sweat is in the best situation He to be in without water. He figures unless he finds water, this is his last day. He rinses his mouth out with a little windshield wiper fluid while he waits. Uh, he waits a while after spitting that little bit out to see if his mouth goes numb or if he feels dizzy or something. Has his mouth gone numb? Is it just in his mind? He's not sure. He'll go a little farther and if he still doesn't find water, he'll try drinking some of the fluid. And then he has to face his next harder question. Which way does he go from here? Does he keep walking the same way he was yesterday, assuming that he still knows which way that is? Or does he try a new direction? He has no idea what to do. Looking at the hills and the dunes around him, he thinks he knows the direction he was heading before. Just by going, just by go, just going by a feeling, he points himself somewhat to the left of that and starts walking. As he walks, the day starts heating up. The desert, too cold just a couple of hours before, soon becomes an oven again. He sweats a little at first and then stops. He starts getting worried at that. When he stops sweating, he knows that means you're in trouble, usually right before heat stroke. That is true. He decides it's time to try the windshield wiper fluid. He can't wait any longer. If he passes out, he's dead. He stops in the shade of a large rock, takes the bottle out, opens it, and takes a mouthful. He slowly swallows it, making it last as long as he can. He feels so good in his dry and cracked throat that he doesn't even care about the nasty taste. He takes another mouthful and makes it last too. Slowly, he drinks half the bottle. He figures that since he's drinking it, he might as well drink enough to make some difference and keep himself from passing out. He's quit worrying about the denaturing of the wiper fluid. 
If it kills him, it kills him. He did, if he didn't drink it, he'd die anyway. Besides, he's pretty sure whatever substance they denature the fluid with is just designed to make you sick. Their way of keeping winos from buying cheaper wipe, cheap wiper fluid from, for the ethanol content. He can handle throwing up if it comes to that. He walks. He walks in the hot, dry, windless desert. Sand, rocks, hills, dunes, the occasional scrawny cactus or dried bush. No sign of water. Sometimes he'll see a little movement to one side or the other, but whatever moved is usually gone before he can focus his eyes on it. Probably birds, lizards, or mice. Maybe snakes. Though they usually move it more at night. He's careful to stay away from movements. After a while, he begins to stagger. He's not sure if it's fatigue, heat stroke, finally catching to him, or maybe he was wrong and the denaturing of the wiper fluid was worse than he thought. He tries to steady himself and keep going. After more walking, he comes to a large stretch of sand. This is good. He knows he passed over a stretch of sand in the SUV. He remembers doing it. He remembers doing donuts in it. Or at least he thinks he remembers it. He's getting woozy enough and tired enough that he's not sure what he remembers anymore of, or if he's halluc hallucinating. But he thinks he remembers it, so he heads off into it, trying to get to the other side, hoping that it gets him closer to town. He was heading for a town, wasn't he? He thinks he was. He isn't sure anymore. He's not even sure how long he's been walking anymore. Is it still morning? Or has it moved into afternoon and the sun is going down again? It must be afternoon. Seems like it's been too long since he started out. He walks through the sand. After a while, he comes to a big dune in the sand. This is bad. He doesn't remember any dunes when driving over the sand in his SUV, or at least he doesn't think he remembers any. This is bad. But he has no other direction to go. Too late to turn back now, he figures. He'll get to the top of the dune and see if he can see anything from there that will help him find the town. He keeps going up the dune. Halfway up, he slips in the bad footing of the sand for the second or third time, and he falls to his knees. He doesn't feel like getting back up. He'll just fall down again. So he keeps going up uh, keep going up the dune on his hands and knees. While crawling, if his throat weren't so dry, he'd laugh. He'd finally gotten to the hackened image of a man lost in a desert crawling through. The sand on his hands and knees. It would, it would be the perfect image, he imagines. If only his clothes were more ragged. The people crawling through the desert in cartoons always had ragged clothes. But his have lasted without any rips so far. Somebody will probably find his desuscitated corpse half buried in the sand years from now, and his clothes will still be in the same fine shape. Shake the sand out and a good wash and they'd be wearable again. He wishes his throat were wet enough to laugh. He coughs a little instead and it hurts. He finally makes it to the top of the sand dune. Now that he's at the top, he struggles a little, but manages to stand up and look around. All he sees is sand. Sand and more sand. Behind him. About a mile away, he thinks he sees a ro the rocky ground. He left to head to his. He left to head into the sand. Ahead of him, more dunes, more sand. This isn't where he drove his SUV. This is hell, or close enough. Again, he doesn't know what to do. He decides to drink the rest of the wiper fluid while figuring it out. He takes the bottle and is removing the cap when he glances to the side and sees something, something in the sand. At the bottom of the dune, off to the side, he sees something strange. It's a flat area in the sand. He stops taking the cap of the bottle off and tries to look closer. The area seems to be circular, and it's dark, darker than the sand. And there seems to be something in the middle of it, but he can't tell what it is. He looks as hard as he can, and still can tell from here, he's going to have to go down there to look. He puts his bottle back in his pocket and starts to stumble down the dune. After a few steps, he realizes he's in trouble. He's not going to be able to keep his balance. After a couple seconds of more sliding, tottering steps, he falls and starts to roll down the dune. The sand is so hot when his body hits it that for a minute he thinks he's caught on fire on the way down, like a movie car wreck flashing into flames as it goes over the cliff before it ever even hits the ground. He closes his eyes and mouth, covers his face with his hands, and waits to stop rolling. <gasps> he stops at the bottom of the dune. After a minute or two, he finds enough energy to try and sit up and get at, get the sand out of his face and clothes. When he clears his eyes enough, he looks around to make sure that the dark spot in the sand is still there and he just hadn't imagined it. So seeing the large flat dark spot on the sand, does it ever end? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I 
I don't know. So seeing the large fly dark spot on the sand still there, he begins to crawl towards it. He, he, he'd get up and walk towards it, but he doesn't seem to have enough energy to get up and walk right now. He must be in the final stages of dehydration, he figures. As he crawls, if this place doesn't if this place in the sand doesn't have water, he'll likely never make it anywhere else. This is his last chance. He gets closer and closer, but still can't see what's in the middle of the ed of the dark area. His eyes won't quite focus anymore for some reason, and lifting his head up to look takes so much effort that he gives up trying. He just keeps crawling. Finally, he reaches the area he'd seen from the dune. It takes him a minute of crawling on it before he realizes that he's no longer on sand. He's now crawling on some kind of dark stone. Stone with some kind of marking on it, a pattern cut into the stone. He's too tired to stand up and try and see what the pattern is, so he just keeps crawling. He crawls toward the center, where his blurry eyes still see something in the middle of the dark stone area. Oh my god. How long is this? Like, actually, though. Oh, I'm nowhere near done. <laughs> I'd say I'm like an eighth of the way through it. This is a book. This is a book. His mind detached in a strange way notes that either his hands and knees are so burnt by the sand they no longer feel pain or that this dark stone in the middle of a burning desert with a pounding punishing sun overhead doesn't seem to be hot it almost feels cool he considers lying down on the nice cool surface can you stop i mean i have to see it to the end i'm sorry if you want you can come back in like 20 minutes and it'll probably be near the end <laughs> i have to see it to the end I'm committed. I'm, I'm like, curious now. It's like I'm reading a book. This is like an audiobook now. Cool dark stone. Not a good sign. He must be hallucinating this. He's probably in the middle of a patch of sand, already lying face down and dying, and just imagining this whole thing. A desert mirage. Soon the beautiful woman carrying pitchers of water will come up and start giving him a drink. Then he'll know he's gone. He decides against laying down on the cool stone. If he's gonna die here in the middle of his hallucination, at least he wants to see what's what's in the center before he goes. He keeps crawling. It's the third time that he hears the voice before he realizes that's what he's hearing. He would swear that someone just said, Greetings, traveler. You do not look well. Do you hear me? He stops crawling. He tries to look up from where he is on his hands and knees, but it's too much effort to lift his head. So he tries something different. He leans back and tries to sit up on the stone. After a few seconds, he catches his balance, avoids falling on his face, sits up, and tries to focus his eyes. Blurry, he rubs his eyes with the back of his hands and tries again. Better this time. Yep, he can see. He's sitting in the middle of a large, flat, dark expanse of stone. <laughs> Directly next to him, about three feet away, is a white post or pole about two inches in diameter and sticking up about four or five feet out of the stone at an angle. And wrapped around this white rod tail with a a, with a rattle on, hovering seems to be ready to start rattling his foot. Must be a 15 foot long desert diamondback rattlesnake looking directly at him. Hold on. Yeah, I'll... <laughs> oh, hold on. I scrolled too far. I want to see. Like, time myself. How long? Okay, so from here. I'm going to start scrolling from here and see how long is left. I'm, I'm scrolling now. Just reached the end. <laughs> no. What? Hold on. This joke was a personality profile test. It was the subject of a recent educational psychology master's thesis. The research confirmed a statistically significant correlation which strongly suggests a dependably predictive positive relationship between how a person responds 
What? It's a psych test. This whole thing. It's just to see how much of it you will actually read. <laughs> That's fucked. Whoa, okay, so we'd fall in the third group then. We got bored about a third of the way through. The third group, who decided not to read the entire joke after reading a third or more of it, tend to be commitment phobic. <laughs> Whoa. Lack the ability to move forward. Whoa. Relax. That's kind of rude. What's the punchline? <laughs> okay, we just met the snake. Here's the punchline. Jack took a firmer grip on the steering wheel as the RV ran up on the stone, shouting to Sammy, we never met Sammy, as he pulled the steering wheel, better Nate than Lever, he ran over the snake. Damn, the longest joke ever. In the world. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. I do want to read the whole thing someday. That's not a joke, someone just wrote out the whole thing up by. There's a 10 minute joke from Norm MacDonald. That's pretty cool. Ooh, there's a shortened version. <laughs> How long is the shortened version? Oh, okay, there's a TLDR version of it, and it's still like three paragraphs long. So this guy is driving in the desert when his car breaks down. He gets out and begins looking for help, but he can't find any and passes out of heat stroke. But he survives, and a snake stared him right in the eyes. Ah, he screamed. Hello, said the snake. My name is Nate, and I am a magical snake. Nate bites the guy, and all of a sudden he feels better. I'm Jack, by the way, he says. He talked for a while until Jack said, That pole you're coiled around looks like a lever. It is, Nate replies. What does it do? Jack asks. Destroys humanity. Come on, Jack chuckled. What does it actually do? I'm not lying. It does destroy humanity. This place used to be the Garden of Eden, and God placed it here in case the human race fell out of whack. Nate replied. Jack stayed for a while longer, but eventually he asked Nate where the nearest town is. Nate directed Jack to the town, and he found a tow truck to tow back his broken car. A few weeks later, Jack decides to go visit Nate. As he drove over the final sand dune, he realized he was headed directly towards the lever that destroys humanity. He tries to turn, but there isn't enough traction. He guesses that if he veers enough, he might just be able to avoid hitting the lever. He veers left as hard as he can, but soon realizes that Nate is lying there. There isn't enough time to turn the other way, so he runs over Nate. As he runs overnight, he exclaims, better Nate than Lever. Damn. That's not that good. Honestly, it's not worth it. I can see why it's just a psych text. Psych, psychology test. Oh my god, thank god I didn't read the whole thing. There's someone who read it on YouTube four years ago, but it's a two and a half hour long video. <laughs> oh my god. Well, here we go. Wikipedia. Funniest joke in the world. Oh, that's my Python sketch. I thought it was the actual. Damn. <laughs> I don't know where that sits on the list. What do we have again? We had... What was it the bottom? Oh, uh, the Minecraft joke book. Yeah, the very, very bottom. Oh, uh, kid-friendly jokes for the classroom. And then... Uh, what was right above that? What was right above that? Buzzfeed? <laughs> and then... Dark humor jokes, which were where pretty good. So I would... I don't know. I think the fact that it's so long is really fucking funny. I would put it... I would put Nate the snake above it. To 
be real with you. I put it right above. So we got a nice pyramid going on. This is a joke by Jeremy C. Downington in Pennsylvania. A kid finds a magical lamp. He rubs the lamp, and a genie appears and says, What is your first wish? The kid says. I wish I were rich. The genie applies. It is done. What is your second wish, rich? That's kind of lame, Jeremy. This one's by Xavier B. Thompson. Leaving a grocery store, a customer dropped a bag of flour. The scout ran to pick it up. Don't bother, young man, said the customer. It's self-rising. Oh, it's flour. Ah. This is one by Axel P. A photon walks into a hotel. The desk clerk says, Can we help you with your luggage? The photon says, No thanks, I'm traveling light. Ha ha ha. Christopher P. from Long Beach, California. The teacher asked little Johnny if he knew his numbers. Yes, he said, my father taught me. Good, what comes after three? Four. What comes after six? Seven. Very good, your dad did a good job. What comes after ten? Jack. What? Jack. What comes after ten, Jack? Yeah, yeah, we, if you, yeah, we can. I, I gave up on it. Um, and I did find someone who did a YouTube video reading it, and it was two and a half hours long. Um, and that is, that is the main reason why I, why I gave up on it. I don't know, I don't understand Christopher P. What comes after 10, Jack? Who's Jack? Kangaroo grown to her friend the rabbit. The forecast calls for rain. What's the problem with that? Asked the rabbit. We could use some rain. Sure, the kangaroo said. That means the kids will have to play inside all day. Oh, because they have a pouch. Oh, it's like cards. No, you're right. 100% right about that. My day was alright. I just worked today. That's pretty much it. Hope your day was okay. So what was the... We had, Okay, we have like... Bottom of the barrel was the Minecraft joke book. And then... My kids... Kids joke, clean, 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 kids jokes for the classroom. And then it was BuzzFeed, and then, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll put the, the world's longest joke right above BuzzFeed, and then we'll do the dark humor ones, because some of them were kind of funny. So we'll, we'll, we'll sl and then where does, where does, um, <laughs> What is, what, who said the, the Jack joke? Who did Jack? Who did 10, what is 10 Jack? Christopher P. Longest joke at the bottom. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. And then it turned out it was just a psychology test to see how long you would read it for before giving up. It's crazy. Blew my mind. <laughs> You yeah, made the longest joke. <laughs> oh, that's fair. It was long. If I kept going, we'd still be reading it two and a half hours later. Hmm. Yeah, I think, you know what? There's only 
So many written jokes we can do. And we went to, to, to fucking BuzzFeed for the visual shit, but. I'm not gonna read this one, but apparently there's another longest joke. And it is a whole book. <laughs> I mean, 300, apparently, it's 358 pages long. And KDH gave it five stars. <laughs> Damn, KDH. I feel like it's not a joke at that point. It's a book, you know? That's different. It's not a joke book. It's a... It's not a book of jokes. It's a... The whole book is a joke. What? What am I saying? It's not... It's not a joke book. The book is... The joke? The joke is in the book. Hold on. I had it in my head. You're gonna sleep now? I know it is. That's fair. It's, you're like way... You're on like, um... The UTC time, right? So it's probably like 5 a.m. for you or something, right? That's totally fine. Four? Oh, I was close. I was close. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Enjoy your your sleep. Sleep is important. I will be joining you shortly. I want to try and hit an hour and a half for each of these, so we're almost there. Sleep well. Sleep well, too, too. Yeah, and the Norm MacDonald has a seven minute joke, which is crazy. Apparently, Bobby. Bobby Lee has a seven minute joke. Anyways, comedy, what is it? When you really think about comedy. How long did I read the world's longest joke for? Was that like 20 minutes? I don't even know how much time went by. Oh, geez, I smacked my microphone. I was in a haze. I was in a fugue state. I got so entranced by that. I thought, I mean, it was just like an actual book at that point. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? Is this guy going to be okay? I was invested personally. Um, and I'm like, oh, there's a fucking talking snake and he's on a plate and he's guarding the lever that destroys humanity from the Garden of Eden. Better Nathan Lever. Poor Nate. I feel bad for Nate the Talking Snake. You know you guard a lever for centuries and how do you get repaid? You get run over by an SUV. Say la vie, I guess. You know, that is life. You can protect something for your whole life, but in the end, you're just gonna get hit by a car. <laughs> you can protect your kids all you want, and you're just gonna get run over by a transport truck, though. So, what's the point? <laughs> oh my god, I'm losing my mind. I feel like this is a bad idea to do this so late, but... But whatever. I'm gonna keep doing it. I hope the audio is okay. Probably isn't. I feel like I started this kind of awake, and now I, now I am gone. Menly, I men, menly, menly, I am gone. I am gone. Bye bye, menly. <laughs> menly, I am gone. Bye bye. Oh, but yeah, you know, I do actually enjoy doing this. This is fun. Um, and I'm trying to get on like a... Oh, fuck. I'm trying to get on like a stream streak. I'm trying to stream every day for the next long time, I guess. Hello. My tablet turned off. Gamer. 
Oh, I was going now. Okay, I guess I'm blowing up Twitch chat on my phone, baby. Oh. <laughs> what else am I doing? I got nothing. I got nothing. Uh, boom. Boom. Got it. Got it open. Okay. <laughs> what was I saying? I want to keep doing this. Um, I've... I enjoyed making the first one, and I just gotta come. <laughs> I just gotta come more prepared. I think next time. Um, I want to do a lot of like Reddit shit. Like, am I the asshole? Am I the devil? Um, weaponized, not weaponized incompetence. What's the other one? Where you're like doing something, but like out of spite. I don't know. I don't remember. I want to do it, though. I want to do a bunch of it. Because um, I think it'd be funny to do some I Am I Asshole stuff. And then um, with, with my brain that is fried. With my fried... 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 Chicken. KFC. KFC bucket meal. Come get it. Five dollars. Six dollars. Seven dollars. Eight dollars more. Eight dollars, nine dollars, ten dollars. Or <laughs> oh fuck. What do you want from life? Sometimes, you know, I. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Um. I just got a pad for the next minute, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I am watching the stream on my phone. And I'm just wondering how the fuck did I come up with such a nice little background? You know, I got the little fancy particles flown into space. It looks great. And the curtains. Oh, if only the curtains were animated. Mm. <laughs> then it would be perfection. You know, I think I'm so drowsy that if I stare at the curtains long enough, it kind of does look like they are moving. Is that just me? Or am I going insane? I just realized these are going to be archived on Spotify, and no one's going to know what I'm talking about. And I sound like an insane person, but I swear to God the curtains are moving. They're not, because I know it's an image. Because I put it in OBS as an image, but it looks like they're fucking moving. Am I drunk? Am I high? Did someone slip me an edible? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> what did I eat today? <laughs> I had two croissants, three pieces of banana bread. And... Some, uh, some chicken breast. Potatoes, carrots. I skipped lunch. Because I'm an idiot. No, I had mac and cheese. I didn't skip lunch. I had fucking mac and cheese. Cheese and mac. Everyone says mac and cheese, but what if, what if I want to have cheese and mac? What's the difference between mac and cheese and cheese and mac? Does there need to be more mac to cheese for it to be mac and cheese? And then more cheese to mac for it to be cheese and mac? So if I have cheese and mac, I need more cheese, less mac. So if I have cheese and mac, I need like four mac and like a bowl of melted cheese. And that's cheese and mac. But mac and cheese is like a bunch of noodles and a little bit of cheese. But then we get bacon carbonara. What if I want mac and bacon? Mac and back. What if I want mac and back? Then I have, it would it be a... 50-50 ratio of mac to back? Or would, or would it be a lot of mac and a little bit of back? But what if I want to have back and mac? Then I have a lot of back, a little bit of mac. <laughs> what if I want to have bacon and cheese? Well, then I would just have bacon and cheese. They wouldn't be mixed. It would be bacon and then cheese. Because those are two different. But what if, and then bacon, mac, and cheese... 
is there is that just is bacon mac and cheese just carbonara or is it or is bacon mac and cheese different and carbonara is mac cheese and bacon right like if you put the bacon first does that mean that it's primarily bacon and it's got a little bit of mac a little bit of cheese but like carbonara is like mac and cheese and like a little bit of bacon <laughs> But what if I just want mac and back? No cheese. Raw noodles. Bacon. That's it. Cut out the cheese entirely. What if that's what I want? Would it be mac and back? B-A-C, mac and back? Or bacon with little macaroni noodles and call that back and mac? These are the kind of questions that need answering. And nobody thinks about these things except for me and this is why I need a podcast because I am genuinely concerned that I want Mac and back but it doesn't exist and I'm not a chef I can't make that I can't make Mac and back I could try but I don't think it's going to be any good who wants to eat raw noodles and bacon? But maybe it would be good. I don't know. Who knows? Make Mac and Back. Tell me how it goes. Figure it out. I'm gonna go to bed. As you can tell, I could probably need it. Anyway. Mac and Back aside. I hope you have a good night. I'm gonna, I'm going to bed, and it's gonna be great. Um, I'll be doing this again tomorrow, probably. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, I'm gonna try to do it. If I don't stream during the day, playing like a video game, or doing some sort of activity, then it probably means I will not be doing this in the evening. But if I don't stream during the day, then I will be doing this in the evening, because I'm gonna try and stream once per day. And I've been on a th three, four day? Three day, four day streak, I think so far. So not bad. Not bad at all. Have a good night. I love you. Kiss, kiss, smooch, smooch. I'm muting my microphone now and I'm gonna turn the stream off. Bye bye. Kiss, mama. Kiss, mama. Kiss. <laughs>